Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to read an article entitled United Southeast Asian Fronts Against China Unlikely. According to the Indonesian Maritime Security Agency, in late December 2019, 63 Chinese fishing boats escorted by two Chinese Coast Guard vessels enter Indonesia's claim exclusive economy zone in the south central part of the South China Sea. Indonesia protested vehemently, sending warship and jet fighter to the area. Some analysts are predicting that Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, and maybe even the Philippines will form a united front that actively oppose China's claims in the South China Sea. Indeed, some see China's incursion into Indonesia's EEZ as a turning point in Southeast Asia-China relations, but this is hyperbole. At the 53rd Asian Foreign Minister meeting in January, the most that could be mustered regarding the South China Sea was Treat concern about land reclamation, recent development, and serious incident eroding trust and confidence, increasing tension and possibly undermining regional stability. The ASEAN Chairman Vietnam's Foreign Minister Pam Bin Min also reaffirmed that the importance of all countries respecting the UN conventions on the law of the sea but he did not explicitly mention China. While this language may be considered progress in Asian speak, it was hardly a robust expression of united opposition against China's action. There are good reasons why an anti-China front within ASEAN is unlikely to materialize. This nation all want China's continued economic largest and have political and military reasons for not wanting to fall out of favor with China. Indonesia does not want this thief to escalate. In 2016, one of its navy vessels fired at the Chinese fishing vessels in Indonesia's claim EEZ. This time, naval and coast guard vessels as well as air force aircraft were deployed, but their actions were restrained and no weapons were discharged. Indonesia's defense minister Prabowo Subianto emphasized that China is a friendly nation Coordinating Minister for Maritime Affairs and Investment Luhut Panjaitan H. Prabowo saying Indonesia and China should not quarrel. Indonesia's principal security concern is internal stability. China provides significant economic assistance and investment that is important to this end. So Indonesia has balanced qualifying its nationalist anti-China elements and persuading China to remove its vessel from Indonesia's EEZ, at least temporarily. It has preserved its national, national interests without endangering its China's investment or providing sufficient fodder for its domestic anti-China nationalists. Unless China loses patents, and does something foolish to upset the relations of the court. Indonesia is unlikely to abandon this delicate equilibrium. China has also, also been fishing in Malaysia's EEZ and alleged the intimidating fishers and other nationally sanctioned actors there. But as for Malaysian's Prime Minister, Mahathir Mohamad said, Malaysia is simply too small to face up to China. So instead, we watch what they are doing. We report that they are doing, but we do not chase them away or try to be aggressive. China and Malaysia have agreed to a joint dialogue mechanism for the South China Sea. 
also for Kuwait, a united front with Vietnam against China regarding their joint claim to continental shelf. Malaysia has proceeded unilaterally with exploration there, much to Vietnam's dismay. <coughs> there were also flare up between the Philippines and China regarding what the Philippine claims in China's illegal fishing and intimidating of Filipino fishermen and in the Philippines claim be easy. There has also been conflict over the exploration of petroleum resources there. But the Philippines will not join front of a smaller Southeast Asian nation against China's so China Sea intimidations. It has made its own political accommodation with China with promise of more China's investment and joint development of petroleum resources. Now there, there are also talks between their Coast Guard that could reduce incident and tension at sea. China recognized that its relationship with the Philippines regarding the South China Sea is being watched carefully by the other claimants and it is trying to make a showcase of its peaceful dispute management and good neighbor policy. Vietnam has been very aggressive in its response to what is seized at China's illegal incursion into its claim, it, its claim maritime zone. Although it has not recently used its navy or air force to confront China's vessels, while Vietnam will use tit for tat strategy to defend its perceived right, it is rightfully wary of pushing China too far. China will likely make good use of those individual economic and political needs to prevent unity against it. But China is already making some adjustment in its policy and action to partially and temporarily accommodate their concern. China admit that its fishermen had taken fish from waters claimed by Indonesia and that they had pushed its government to allow them to do so. And China has no other its fishing boats to at least temporarily leave Indonesia claim be easy. But this doesn't mean that China will completely to surrender its claim. China thinks long term. This temporary adjustment gives hope that this dispute can be resolved. Such hope, coupled with China's growing military and economic power and the pragmatic realization that its looming regional presence is long term, with proven operational unity. So that's all the article. Bye bye and see you on my next video.